Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be working on this Father's Day tumbler using these decorative floor paint chips and teaching you how to distress a double coat of spray paint. If you've worked with these paint chips before, you know that they are super pokey and cause a lot of coats of epoxy. So we're really gonna focus hard on prep work for this cup to avoid having multiple extra coats of epoxy. In total, this took only three coats of epoxy because I had taken all of the steps necessary to prep the cup to make sure everything was packed down as flat as possible. We only needed three coats. So I'm going to start out by either crumbling these with my hands or you can smash them with your PVC pipe, hammer, whatever you want to do, but just break them down so they're a little bit smaller. The smaller they are, the less pokey they're going to be, the less they're going to stick up um, and you're not going to have to sand as much too. So I'm going to put the initial coat of paint chips down and I'm just going to take a gloved hand tapping all the way around the cup, making sure to work extra hard around that rim on the top and the bottom so we don't have anything sticking out on the edges. And then once I've got the initial layer laid down, I'm going to take a handful of paint chips and just crumble them right in my hand and sprinkle them over top of any of the open gaps that got pushed around after we patted down that first coat. So this is the same concept as if you were glittering. You're going to lay down your chunkiest glitter first, and then you're gonna come back in and fine tune that with a fine coat of glitter. Same concept here. You're just filling in the spaces with the smaller chunks of this paint chip. Now that everything is laid down flat, I'm just going to let that epoxy cure and then we're going to go over the completely cured epoxy and paint chips with a coat of Crystal Act glitter glue just to ensure everything stays down, none of the epoxy repels. After about two hours, that glue should be completely dried. I'm going to just give it a light sanding around the rim, top and bottom, break down any pokey bits that are sticking up and then go in with my second coat of epoxy. Once that second coat of epoxy is completely cured, I went around the rim with my Dremel just to make sure there was just a small um, line of stainless steel for the final coat of epoxy to adhere to. And then I took my painter's tape and I ripped it kind of organically. Um, this is being put down because it's going to prevent us from having to use acetone to rub away the paint from the top and bottom rim. So you're just, like I had mentioned in the beginning, you're working really hard in the beginning to cause less work towards the end. So a lot of prep work for this one, but totally worth it. So we're just going to tape this off and then spray paint right over top of it. Once you peel it away, you don't even have to bother with trying to use a baby wipe or a paper towel or anything like that to rub the paint away on the edges. 
Um, it's also nice because if you have any gaps in your epoxy, if you're spray painting over top of those gaps, the spray paint's gonna seep into the gapping or the cracks or whatever you wanna call it. And then it's gonna be stuck in the paint chips. So we don't want to do that. We're just gonna put tape over it to prevent all of that mess from happening. And then once we've got everything taped down really well, we're gonna go over it with the Iron Lac Black Matte Spray Paint, just one coat. I went and hit that with my heat gun and then went in with this Camouflage Rust-Oleum, I believe it's Army Green. And we're gonna do one and a half coats, if you will. So I'm gonna do my initial spray down and then it dries pretty quickly. So I immediately went back over it um, and spray painted just to kind of make sure all of the gaps and everything were filled in. There weren't any like translucent spots um, in that green paint. And then we're gonna let that sit for a couple of hours and then we can go in with the distressing. So I did pull the tape immediately um, after spray painting this. It's not necessary, I'm just incredibly impatient. So <laughs> if you guys wanna wait, you're welcome to do that. Um, but I get impatient, I wanted to see what the result was gonna be. So I pulled it right away. Once that paint is fully dry, we're gonna go in with the distressing. You're always going to want to make sure that you've got some sort of a soft material under this tumbler that you're distressing. If you're putting it on like a cup cradle or on your desk and you're constantly rotating that bare spray paint, it's gonna end up chipped or scratched or scuffed away and it's gonna show through the epoxy. So make sure you've got like a paper towel, a towel, um, a rug, something soft underneath it, just so you don't mess up any of the spray paint that you've got going on there. So in order to expose the paint chips, you're gonna need to use a baby wipe or a paper towel. I find that baby wipes work the best. It kind of dilutes the acetone and the um, rubbing alcohol so it doesn't you don't get too far ahead of yourself. It doesn't take away too much paint where it's not able to be fixed. So I prefer using a baby wipe over a towel or a coffee filter or paper towel or something like that. So uh, that's my reason for doing that. But anyways, so we're gonna start with the acetone to expose the paint chips. And my thought process on the distressing was to distress in the center and then once I move to the left or the right of the distressing I would distress the top and bottom of the tumbler and then once I move on to my next set of distressing I would do the center again but I did want to ensure that I was leaving a gap in the center of the tumbler with just the spray paint so I could apply my decal to the paint portion as opposed to the paint chip portion because I wanted that decal to stand out without drowning into the background of the paint chips, if that makes sense. So when I first started this, I worked in the center and then like I had mentioned, to the left of that, I distressed from the top and the bottom, which you're seeing here. And then when I go into my next section, you'll see that I'm distressing into the center again. Um, so once I get that paint chip exposed, I'm going to turn my baby wipe or my paper towel or whatever you're using and spray it with rubbing alcohol. So I don't want to continue to use the acetone because that's going to continue to eat away all of that paint. And once I get the initial paint chips exposed, I want to just work to kind of fine tune that distressing, if you will. Um, and we're gonna do that with the rubbing alcohol. So I wanna expose that black underneath the green, and then I want to kind of distress the green a little bit, but not too much. Um, but we're just gonna work around the tumbler and kind of expose that as we see fit. Less is more here, you don't wanna overdo it um, because you can't take it back. You can always take paint off, but you can't go back and re-add it unless you're completely taking it off and re-spray painting it. So we don't want to have to do that. Um, so just be careful, 
make very intentional decisions when you're doing this. Um, and then once I've got all of the distressing done in the rims and on the center, I'm gonna go in with just the rubbing alcohol and we're going to distress the edges just to expose that black. I don't really wanna pull away a lot um, of paint to expose the paint chips. So we're gonna go around with the rubbing alcohol, not this portion, <laughs> this is acetone, um, but we're just gonna expose that black to kind of give it more of a distressed look. And you'll see towards the end uh, that it gives a really, really great look. This is what I was mentioning, exposing the black part on the rims with just the rubbing alcohol. So we're really just using the alcohol to try and push back that green spray paint to expose the black spray paint underneath. Now that all of that distressing is done, we're gonna just go over it real quick and make sure there are no like streaks of spray paint that got wiped off that are stuck on the green. And then I just sprayed some Dawn dish soap, the power wash kind, and put this under warm water. I just rubbed it with my hand. I didn't use a towel or anything. I didn't want to chance the paint being removed. And then I just pat it dry with a paper towel. I cut this decal out that I found on Etsy at three and a half inches. And then because this is not epoxied, we're applying this directly to spray paint that's not sealed. Um, when I applied it and removed the transfer tape, I made sure to pull the transfer tape flat to my tumbler. I didn't wanna pull it away from the tumbler because then you're gonna chance pulling that paint up. So if you're kind of laying it flat and then pulling it back on the tumbler, you have way less chance of exposing that paint um, or pulling that paint uh, and then ruining your cup. So once that was applied, I went in with my final coat of epoxy because this was just Oracle 651 vinyl. I knew it wasn't gonna lift, it was just plain, it wasn't metallic or holographic or anything like that. I didn't bother to seal it with my polycrylic as I normally would um, because it doesn't have a tendency to lift up. 
And then after one final coat of this Flynn Sisters regular setting epoxy and torching, this cup was completely finished. So three coats in total, uh, one was fast set, two were regular setting of the Flynn Sisters epoxy, and it turned out great. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments. If you try this, don't forget to tag me. I would love to see it. I think I'm gonna be doing some more distressing. I always tend to stray away from it because it makes me nervous and I don't know why because I know that I can make it turn out good <laughs> each time. I don't know. I just need to practice it more to become more confident in it. I don't have any problems doing it while I'm doing it, um, but just the thought of it kind of makes me nervous. So <laughs> if you're on the fence, just do it. Trust me. Just try it. You can always remove it and retry it if you need to, but uh, definitely worth it. So don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to get notified of next weekend's tutorial. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Don't forget to tag me if you remake this and I will see you guys next weekend.